welcome to all my dear students in our last class we were discussed about conductance molar conductance equivalent conductance and some few problems regarding it so on this lecture we are going to discuss that is variation of molar conductance equivalent conductance and conductivity with dilutions so our today's topic that is variation applications and its applications <clears throat> see wha what does it effect upon the variations or you can say what does it effect upon the conductivity conductance and uh, molar conductance equivalent conductance while in case of dilutions on dilution or you can say when the dilution increases conductance increases conductance also that is represented as g it is also increases at the same time conductivity decreases conductivity that is kappa it decreases molar conductance and equivalent conductance these are increases on dilutions so these things we need to know with briefly okay how the dilution increases regarding that or simultaneously conductance increases conductivity decreases and molar and equivalent conductivity it also increases for both strong and weak electrolyte for both strong and weak electrolyte on increasing dilution on increasing dilution of electrolytic solution or decreasing concentration decreasing concentration conductance increases that is conductance molar conductance lambda m here conductance we can write that is g molar conductance that is lambda m and equivalent conductance that is lambda eq increases whereas conductivity decreases see conductivity that is kappa decreases on dilution increases so this symbol is denoted for the decrease this symbol is represented for increases okay conductivity decreases 
on dilution or we can say by by decreasing concentration conductivity also decreases because what is its reason because ions per ml ions per ml of volume of solution volume of solution volume of solution decreases decreases this is the region main region as you know that conductivity it is nothing but the conductance made by all the ions provided in electrolytes provided through electrolytes which kept in between two electrodes which having 1 cm and the area of cross section is 1 cm cube so for the volume of 1 cm cube how much the conductance is produced that is conductivity conductivity means here it is conductivity conductivity so conductivity means it is the distance between two electrode is 1 cm and area of cross section is 1 cm square that is area and uh, this is the dip, this is the distance between two electrode okay this is conductivity so volume will be 1 cm cube 1 cm cube means or 1 ml so for 1 ml of volume how much conductivity how much conductance is showing that is conductivity so on dilution on dilution volume of electrolytic solution electrolytic solution so on dilution the number of ions per the ml of volume it decreases for example try to understand my dear students if for 1 ml for 1 ml if for 1 ml 2 ions are there 1 ml of volume of solution 2 ions are there on dilution on dilution on dilution 2 ml because dilution on dilutions volume increases and concentration decreases so on dilutions 2 ml of volume 2 ml volume of solution it remains that is 2 ions only so what is the number of ions per volume per ml that is 2 ions per 1 ml so here for 2 ml of volume of solutions what will be the total number of ions that is 2 ions it means we can write that is 2 ions per 2 ml here on the dilutions the number of ions per ml it decreases because before the dilutions supposed to be if we take 1 ml volume of solutions containing 2 ions which is responsible for conducting conductance if the electrolytic is in between 1 cm cube volume that is whatever the conductance it will show that is conductivity or specific conductance we can say on dilutions the number of ions remains the same but volume increases it means the number of ions per ml of volume it decreases result of which conductivity also decreases so here we need to understand the concept that conductivity decreases on dilution and on dilution dilution means that is in, increase of volume and decrease of concentration okay so here we need to understand conductivity kappa decreases on dilution because ions per ml of volume of solution decreases here 
I will explain all these things to make you understand properly that conductivity is nothing but the whatever the ions produced and from that ions conductance is produced if the electrolytic solution is placed in between two electrodes which having the distance that is 1 cm with area of cross section that is 1 cm square whole volume it will be 1 cm cube or nothing but it is 1 ml so whatever the ions whatever the conductance produced from the 1 ml of volume of solution that is conductivity on dilutions the number of ions per ml of volumes it decreases result of which it decreases but in case of but in case of molar conductance uh, then conductance uh, then uh, equivalent conductance these are increases on dilutions why because on dilutions the dissociation of electrolyte it it becomes very fast because on dilutions dissociation is getting very fastly means definitely conductive molar conductance equivalent conductance and conductance will increase but this uh, the dilution effect is different for strong electrolyte and weak electrolyte okay let's see dilution that is decrease of concentration decrease of concentration for strong electrolyte edge edge strong electrolyte dissociate very fastly dissociates very fastly so conductance or conductance and molar conductivity equivalent conductivity increases slightly increases slightly in this slightly means as that in strong electrolyte the dissociation pro process is very fast that's why the conductance molar conductivity equivalent conductivity it increases very slightly means up to certain extent it will increase then it will stop that is for strong electrolyte if we if we plot the graph for the conductance of strong electrolyte, electrolyte it will be like that it will be like that here it is the concentration it is molar conductivity and that this graph can be plotted by experimental value of molar conductance and equivalent conductance of strong and weak electrolyte here the equation is that is lambda m for any concentration is equal to lambda m at zero concentration minus a into root over of c this equation is given by that is onsager equation डिपाइ हकल अनसागर इक्वेशन डिपाइ डिपाइ हकल डिपाइ हकल इज वन ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट हु मेड दिस इक्वेशंस बाय एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग द कंडक्टेंस मोलर कंडक्टेंस इक्विलेंट कंडक्टेंस एंड कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ स्ट्रांग एंड वीक इलेक्ट्रोलाइट विद 
dilution. Okay. This is the graph for strong electrolyte. Let it, it, it is with KCl, potassium chloride. If we plot the weak electrolyte, it is for strong electrolyte. Strong electrolyte means strong electrolytes dissociate very fastly. So conductance and molar conductance, equivalent conductance increase very slightly, only slightly. Okay. This much from this much from the concentration here, it will increase and it will touches to that moral conductance means its value is it, it approaches limiting value it approaches or you can say it approaches limiting value limiting value on on infinite dilution on infinite dilution means Whenever we are making dilute upon any electrolyte for strong electrolyte, the conductance it will slightly increases and it will approaches to the limiting value. Means from here there is no increaseness. Means when it touches to that particular limiting value, it touches the limit limiting value. It do not increase further. So for the strong electrolyte due to very fastly dissociation in its dilution it slightly increase it slightly increase and it approaches it touches the limit limiting value means for further that from that value it will not increase but in case of weak electrolyte for weak electrolyte For weak electrolyte, dissociation is very slow. Dissociation is very slow. On dilution, it increases the conductivity, molar conductivity, or equivalent conductivity increases. It increases sharply but it do not have but it do not approaches limiting value but it do not approaches limiting value limiting value so here it is zero concentration it is zero concentration here it is for example 0 0.2 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, that is 8 and 1. These are concentration. Concentration here from this it increases and here it is a molar conductivity. Let it, it be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, like that. So when on dilution, the strong electrolyte it approaches limiting value of molar conductivity. It is experimental, it has shown. So, who has experimentally it shown that is Depay Huckel. Depay Huckel gave the equations upon that molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity with the dilutions. That equations is known as Depay Huckel on some equations. This is this equation that is molar conductance at particular conductance is equal to a particular concentration is equal to limiting molar conductance minus a to the power that into to the root over of c it is the root over of c is the concentration a is the constant it is constant constant term but for weak electrolyte dissociation is very slow on dilution molar conductivity equivalent conductivity increases but it do not approaches limiting value limiting value means the graph will be like that the graph will be like that okay so this is limiting uh, that is uh, weak look like here it is weak look like cs3 coh let it be cs3 coh so here for the weak electrolyte, it will increases. 
it will increases this is weak load like it will increases but it will not approaches the highest value I mean it will not approaches the mean that is constant value it is it keeps increasing it keeps increasing on dilutions because it dissociate very slowly all its dilutions dissociation process that is process is going on and it be on the time it behaves as a strongly look like but it is not a strongly look like because dissociation process is very very slow on dissociation it keeps increasing result of which the conductivity also increases it do not touches the limiting value it do not give the proper or limit value of conductance that's why it keep increasing so by extrapolating the core it the for limiting conductivity or limiting conductance for weak look like is very very difficult means try to understand my dear students uh, at a infinite dilution or we can say for a excess of dilutions or we can say for the saturated dilutions the conductance or molar conductance of strong electrolyte is possible but because it touches the, per, the, uh, the limiting value of conductance for strong electrolyte it gives the limiting value but for the weak electrolyte it does not give any proper value of conductance because it keeps increasing and increasing on dilution it behaves as a strong electrolyte on this case because dissociation process is very slow but it keeps increasing it do not touches so for weak electrolyte to calculate the molar conductance or equivalent conductance at dilution is very very difficult and further to detect that to determine the value at infinite dilution at a, a very very dilution process another process came another law came that is Kohler's law which we are going to discuss here so try to understand for what is the uh, effect does upon uh, dilutions conductance increases because on dilutions volume increases means dissociation pro pro process will goes very fast molar conductance and equivalent conductance also increases return is same that is it goes very fast with dissociation in its dilutions process but conductivity that is specific conductance it specific conductance that is conductivity it decreases result what is the reason reason is that number of ions number of ions or ml of volume or volume ml of volume it decreases decreases is decreases that's why conductivity decreases molar and equivalent conductance increases so from the graph we can see that for a dilutions strong electrolyte it touches a limiting value means at a very dilutions process or we can say at infinite dilutions it touches a limit value means the conductance can be seen what is the proper value of conductance it can be seen from the graph but in case of weak electrolyte it cannot be seen because it keeps increasing and increasing what is that exact value on its dilutions it cannot be calculated for that process another law that came that is Kohler's law and uh, this graph is plotted by that is Debye Huckel on server equations it is the experimental value it has taken and from that experimental value this graph came okay now move on to that is Kohler's law
See, recently we discussed at infinite dilution. At infinite dilutions. Before going to this law, we should know first what is infinite dilutions. Infinite. Do, do you think that infinite dilutions means that is zero concentration where only water is water there? Only water and water is there. There is no concentration of electrolyte. Do you think that? No. It is completely wrong. So what is infinite dilutions? For example, see, it is the volume of electrolyte or you can say the concentration concentration and it is molar conductivity so concentration of electrolyte is for example it is 1.1 1.19 it is the concentration on that time the let it be the molar conductance of electrolyte that is that is 0.21 0.21 on dilution means adding of water concentration will go down so what would be the concentration let it be 1.18 means concentration here decreases it means water is more added to the electrolytic solutions on that time molar conductance it will so increases so 0.22 similarly for 1.17 again on dilutions concentration decreases means con uh, on concentration decreases, volume of solutions increases. Here, the conductance is molar conductance 0 0.23. Similarly, on 1.16, electrolyte that molar conductance is 0 0.24. On 1.15, 0 0.24. On 1.14, 0 0.24. Here, it start increasing with very slightly for strong electrolyte for strong electrolyte any kind of electrolyte the molar conductance equivalent conductance increases but for strong electrolyte it increases slightly then it touches to the a limiting value for from where there is no increase increaseness of that is molar conductance so here it is the point this is the point where there is no increase of molar conductivity can be seen. So for this, for this point, it is called saturated saturation. Saturation, or we can say saturation means that there can be no increase of molar conductance at a dilutions. Dilutions will be there. Concentration will go decrease, but the molar conductance remains same it touches the highest value from that value it will never increases so that is the saturation point this is the saturation point means from this point from this value 0 0.24 there is no increase of molar conductivity can be seen so the, this is the saturation point or we can say this is infinite dilution infinite Dilution means whatever the dilutions we have done from that the highest value of molar conductance it gives and from 0.24 it will not never it will never increase. So this point is considered as a infinite dilutions means from this value there is no increase of molar conductance at dilutions. And that dilution is known as infinite dilutions, and that conductance is molar conductance is recorded as the limiting molar conductance. Limiting means it, it, it limits to its value 0.24, it will not increase. That's why, that's why it is called as a limiting molar conductance. Okay, infinite dilutions. So, from Kohler's law, what we are going to learn that. It is for strong electrolyte means its limiting value can be calculated by the graph that is it is a graph here it is a concentration here it is a molar conductivity and for weak for strong electrolyte it, it uh, like the graph will be like this because it is slightly increases this is zero concentration it is slightly increases and after 
some dilution say it touches its limiting value but the weak electrolyte this is strong this is for strong electrolyte but for weak electrolyte what will be the graph weak electrolyte graph will be this is weak electrolyte means it will steeply increasing and increasing keep increasing it will not touches to that molar conductivity bar and it will not give a sharp uh, value so to calculate the to, to calculate the exact value of a molar conductance or equivalent conductance for a both type of electrolyte any kind of electrolyte that is strong electrolyte and a weak electrolyte Kohler's law came. So according to Kohler's, uh, he often take that uh, experimental value. He found that with a different electrolyte, with the having same anions, the pair of electrolyte which having same uh, anion or the pair of electrolyte which having same cation, it, the difference of molar conductance gives the same. For example, he took colors he took uh, some pairs of electrolyte that is sodium chloride potassium chloride so these two electrolytes having same value of difference that is 23.41 this is the molar conductance the difference between sodium chloride and potassium chloride so molar conductance is that is 23.41 similarly sodium bromide potassium bromide the difference is also same that is 23.41 again potassium nitrate sodium nitrate the difference is that is 23.41 so he takes some pairs of electrolyte who's having same anions but different cations different cations here sodium and potassium these are two different cations here also sodium and potassium so with the different cations and a same anions the molar conductance difference value is the same similarly for different for different pair of electrolyte with having same same cation and different anion for example sodium bromide sodium bromide with sodium chloride here the difference is 2.06 again potassium bromide with potassium chloride difference is 2. Point, that is the difference difference of molar conductance here also difference of molar conductance again that is uh, potassium nitrate uh, potassium nitrate and potassium sodium then lithium nitrate lithium nitrate then lithium chloride or lithium bromide you can say lithium bromide with lithium chloride here the difference of molar conductance that is 2.06 so these values are same similarly with the few pair with having same cation, same anion but different cation value that is also difference is same so from this experimental value he concluded that in a electrolyte solutions on its dilutions it gives individual contributions made by cations and anions with respect to its limiting and that is molar conductance and equivalent conductance means whatever the concentration is taken for strong or both weak electrolyte means for HCl the limiting Conduct, uh, limiting molar conductance the limiting molar conductance 
This is limiting molar conductance of HCl. Limiting means it is infinite dilutions. It, here infinite means there is a point where no increase of molar conductivity can be seen on that particular dilutions. That is infinite dilutions. With a few minutes ago, I discussed with you people that what is infinite dilutions means a saturation point will come where no increase of conductance will be seen or molar conductance will be seen at a particular dilutions level that is infinite dilution. So infinite dilutions, molar conductance of hydrochloric acid will be, it will be that is infinite molar conductance of H plus ion plus infinite molar conductance of that is Cl minus ion. So this is the Kohler's law. If I rough this one, then you will be feeling comfortable to visualize this one. So according to Kohler's law, that the limiting conduct molar conductance of any kind of electrolyte will be sum of individual uh, contributions made by cations and anions with their limiting molar conductivity. Hydrochloric acid when on, on dissociation it gives H plus Cl minus. So when, whenever we are going to find out its conduct molar conductivity then it would be it would be the molar conductivity of H plus ion plus molar conductivity of Cl minus ion because each ions it contributes something what it contributes so few that is molar conductivity or some conductance so when we are talking about the at infinite dilutions the molar conductance of that electrolyte will be it is the summation of the value of limiting molar conductance of cations and anions. It is the summation of limiting molar conductance of cations and anions. That is the Kohler's law. So what would be its definitions, my dear students? The definitions will be like that. dilution on complete dilution it means at infinite dilution so we can say the molar conductivity conductance the molar conductance of an electrolyte We can here in the place of complete we can write on infinite dilution on an on an infinite on in on an infinite dilution the molar conductance of an electrolyte is is sum of individual contribution. contribution of molar conductance is the sum of individual contribution of molar conductance made by made by cation and anion cation and anion with irrespective of its nature at a infinite dilution, at infinite dilutions with irrespective of its nature, with irrespective of its nature. So if we talk about that infinite dilutions, the molar conductance, the molar conductance
at infinite dilutions, the molar conductance of hydrogen chloride will be the in individual contributions made by cation and anion. Whatever the molar conductance made by the cations and anions, by summing that one or the sum of those one, will we will get that infinite dilutions of molar conductivity of particular electrolyte. It may be strong electrolyte, it may be weak electrolyte. So this is Kohler's law. Okay. So what will be its applications? Application. See, from this we can calculate easily that molar conductance of weak electrolyte. See, the definition is the same for that equivalent conductance also. Okay, in place of molar conductance, if we change the equivalent conductance, means what would be the definition on an infinite dilutions, the equivalent conductance of an electrolyte is sum of individual contribution of equivalent conductance made by cation and anion at infinite dilutions with irrespective of its nature. Molar conductance, equivalent conductance showing same trend on its dilutions. So, Kohler's law, by the help of Kohler's law, it can be determined with this help, the, it, it, can, it can be determined or we can say with the help of with the help of Kohler's law with the help of Kohler's law the molar conductance molar and equivalent conductance at a infinite dilution at infinite dilution can be determined or can be calculated example I can take for acetic acid CH3COH this is very very weak electrolyte the molar conductance at infinite dilutions we can put here infinite uh, sign or we can put zero sign because zero shows that zero concentration at infinite dilutions is equal to that is limiting molar conductance of weak electrolyte that is acetic acid is it can be calculated by by taking few strong electrolyte example sodium acetate that is cs 3 coo na plus hcl minus limiting molar conductance of NaCl so by taking three strong electrolyte that is sodium acetate hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride by taking three strong electrolytes value we can find out we can determine the molar conductance of weak electrolyte That's, that is the main contributions made by Kohler's law for determining conductance of weak electrolyte so how it, it could be answered let's see so when this one you will dissociate it will give limiting molar conductivity of acetate ion CS3 minus plus limiting molar conductivity of Na plus ions okay from sodium acetate we will get these ions similarly plus from the hydrochloric acid from hydrochloric acid we will get limiting molar conductance of H plus similarly limiting molar conductance of Cl minus then minus this value the sodium chloride will be limiting molar conductance of Na plus again minus limiting molar conductivity of Cl minus so by cancel out to each other plus minus that is plus 
sodium minus sodium plus. So by cancel out these two, by cancel out these two, and that is Cl minus plus Cl minus minus Cl minus. What ions are remaining? The ions are remaining that is molar conductance of acetate ion CS3COO minus plus molar conductance of H plus. So by combining these two, we will get limiting molar conductance of acetic acid. This is the first applications of Kohler's law. All of you understood or not? So with the help of Kohler's law, by taking few strong electrolyte, with the help of them, we can determine, we can calculate the limiting molar conductivity of weak electrolyte or we can say molar conductivity of weak electrolyte at infinite dilution at a limiting that is a zero dilution that is zero concentration dilution so this is the first applications then second applications it would be That second application, say it will be with the help of Kohler's law, the degree of dissociation can be calculated. Degree of dissociation that is alpha. Degree of dissociation can be calculated. So, how this alpha can be calculated? That is conductivity molar conductivity of an electrolyte divided by molar conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilutions with the help of alpha we can calculate we can calculate that is so dissociation constant dissociation constant dissociation constant that is k value so what will be the k value dissociation constant that is k it is c alpha square divided by 1 minus alpha with knowing value of alpha we can calculate that is a dissociation constant so from the 11th class from the chapter equilibrium ionic equilibrium you learnt that for a weak electrolyte like acetic acid CS3COOH when on it dissociation it gives it acetate ion minus plus H plus ion so the initial concentration let it be it will be uh, C and uh, it is zero concentration when it gives C minus C alpha here C alpha C alpha it gives then that is constant a uh, dissociation constant will be c alpha square divided by that is c minus c alpha so it will be by uh, with uh, having the common value that is c into 1 minus alpha uh, c alpha c square alpha square with that we will get c alpha square minus divided by 1 minus alpha so this is the dissociation constant this is the dissociation constant for an weak electrolyte so this value can be calculated with the help of Kohler's law because with knowing the value of with knowing value of alpha value that is degree of dissociation we can calculate easily dissociation constant so these are the two main important applications for Kohler's law so for this lecture this much only on our next lecture, we will discuss the most important uh, uh, that is topic galvanic cell. So this question also very much important. Many times a long questions came that is uh, explain Kohler's law with its uh, uh, applications. So long questions came in board exam, CHSC board exam, and uh, its applications it, it may ask from time to time it is asking in competitive exams like J and NEET exam. So be prepared very well upon it. On our next lecture, we will discuss that is galvanic cell. So for this lecture, this much only.
bye